Hello, everyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> My name is Yu Kai. Um, um, I'm from China. And three years ago, I was still an animation student. Um, but I always very interested in developing a style frame, like a personal style for my work and to tell my own stories. So this, this was what I came up with um, in my final project. Um, it was also the start of my work. And... Um, <laughs> After this final project, I started to work as an illustrator animator. And I always try to find a balance between motion and still image. And being an illustrator, I actually, it helps me to have a better eye on graphics and shapes and combination of different colors. But on the other hand, I'm also from an animation background. So and what, when I work on images, I always think in a bigger picture, like one step further, how I can animate it and what's the whole scene of this image. So today I'm going to talk about one of my projects um, for TED Ed. It's an animated lesson. It's a bit like TED Talks, but as it's for children and young adults, so it's all animated in kind of interesting way. And the topic was about the scale in the universe and how small humans are. So that's what I got from the client from the beginning. It's nothing image related. It's all in text. And what I usually do is I started to read the script over and over again because I'm not a native English speaker. So it's quite challenging to actually get the structure right from the first read. That's why you can see a lot of the lines and numbers around. And then after that, I started to put a storyboard frame image next to it. And then I will illustrate down what I think in my mind. And as you can see, there's also numbers on those frames. So I, start, I started to time um, the script and then translate it into my visual. But you can also see there's a lot of blue pen drawing on top of the pencil sketch. It's actually, I started to think again and again and then to see um, which is the best way to translate a text script into visual. So after this, I will paint it a bigger frame. And then I can start to do sketches in details, like the stars and people, some characters. But it's still a bit sketchy. So what I do is I use my light box, and then I chase the image again with a more detailed drawings. And then I will scan back the image into the computer. And this is actually the final storyboard I showed to the client. And because I work quite a lot with uh, voiceover animation, so I designed this storyboard template for myself. So you can see short numbers with visual, but also with VO voiceover, and then action, how the movement is going to be like. So it's actually quite easy for me and the client to communicate, because they can just talk about which shot and which line of the script. And then we can easily make up make the visual right and yeah. And then I always like to draw storyboard in details because I can easily cut them into the script. And this is an example of how I make the animatic. The Apollo 8 astronauts flew a distance of 380,000 kilometers to the moon. And our relatively small sun has a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers, or 110 times the Earth's diameter. A step further, the Milky Way holds somewhere between 100 to 400 billion stars. 
Yeah, that's it. Um, so you can see the detail storyboard is actually quite useful. I can just cut them into the animatic. And you will see later on how I use them for my production process. And then here I switch myself back to be an illustrator. I started to color the whole storyboard. And then I treat it as one single illustration so I can easily balance the colors and how much blue I want to use and then how much yellow background I want to transform to green. So it was really helpful for me to understand better the whole storyline. And I will choose two to three frames to go into details to do some style frame to show the final look of this animation. And I will usually go for those ones with characters because I can design the characters in the meantime in the frames. And also still, I'm going to use this as an example to show you how I produce this animation. So this is the style frame of this scene. And then after I designed it, I started to bring it back to Arctic Vet. The Apollo 8 astronauts flew a distance of 380,000 kilometers to the moon. And our relatively small sun has a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers, or 110 times the Earth's diameter. A step further, the Milky Way holds somewhere between 100 to 400 billion stars, including our sun and each glowing dot of a galaxy captured in the deep field image contains billions of stars at the very least. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Because it's just shapes. Yeah, that's how I started. I just shut myself down from being an illustrator. I'm, I wasn't fussy about the details. I just put geometric shapes, like squares, circles, to just get the first movement right. So you can see I put this storyboard on the corner so I can see um, the timing is okay and then the transition is okay. And after that, I will bring everything back to Photoshop. I start to draw in details, but with the animation, I can easily know how big the image I need. So I can actually go in details, like the Milky Way, I need to go into details because it's going to be a zoom in and that's, um, and then after this, um, images, I have a better idea what I need to do. So I go back to After Effects and then started to build up the scene with the elements I've drawn. The Apollo 8 astronauts flew a distance of 380,000 kilometers to the moon. And our relatively small sun has a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers, or 110 times the Earth's diameter. A step further, the Milky Way holds somewhere between 100 to 400 billion stars, including our sun, and each glowing dot of a galaxy captured in the deep field image contains billions of stars at the very least. Almost a decade after taking the deep field image, scientists adjusted the optics on the Hubble telescope and took another long exposure over a period of about four months. Yeah, a bit better, right? So I just started to replace the elements I have, and then in After Effect, I can see if the original movement's right. So you can see I add a bit more detail on the movement, like slowly zoom out or slowly transform to another scene. And that's how I work between uh, steel and motion. Now I'm going to show you a cut of the final film. The Apollo 8 astronauts flew a distance of 380,000 kilometers to the moon. And our relatively small sun has a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers, or 110 times the Earth's diameter. A step further, the Milky Way holds somewhere between 100 to 400 billion stars, including our sun. And each glowing dot of a galaxy captured in the deep field image contains billions of stars at the very least. Almost a decade after taking the deep field image, scientists adjusted the optics on the Hubble telescope and took another long exposure over a period of about four months. 
In the study of the universe, space and time are inextricably linked. That's because of the finite speed of light. So the deep field images are like time machines to the ancient universe. They reach so far into space and time that we can observe galaxies that existed over 13 billion years ago. This means we're looking at the universe as it was less than a billion years after the Big Bang. Yeah, that's my talk. Thank you much.